Welcome to the sixth part of my Adobe Lightroom Classic Masterclass where we take a look at masking. Now with masks you can select areas of your image and only tweak those areas. Masks are very very powerful and they can open up a whole new world of editing for you and they can really bring your photos to the next level. I use masks for almost every single photo that I create, either to pull emphasis on the subject of my photo or to fine tune some specific areas of my photos or to create a vignette around my photo. But let's jump straight into Lightroom and start working with the masks. So to open the masking panel you have to click on this masking icon in the top toolbar. In here you have all the different ways you can create a mask and if you have a clear subject you can try if Lightroom can automatically detect your subject or you can create a mask with any of the different tools. Now on the bottom here you can see this people tab and for me it says no people found. So Lightroom will automatically scan the image for people if it can find faces and then recognize those faces. So you can actually just click on the person that you want to create the mask for. So let's actually take a look at a different image for a second. Here with me in the photo you can see that Lightroom actually detects me and I can just click on this person one here to select myself for the mask. Now there are a ton of ways you can create a mask in Lightroom but I want to show a couple of things before we dive deeper into the different ways to create a mask. So I'm just going to create a quick radial gradient mask right here and draw a circle on the image like this. The first thing you can see is this big red area. Now this area is the area that will get affected by the tweaks we do in our mask. If you cannot see this just click on the show overlay button on the right hand side here. You can also hide the overlay from the same button. Or you can also use the O key on your keyboard to toggle the overlay on or off. Now if you have a photo where the default red color won't work too well, you can click on this little box and change the color to whatever you want it to be. And you can also change the opacity of the overlay. Now in here you can also select to show the affected area or the unaffected area, but I prefer to keep it on the affected area. Now on the top here you have this overlay mode, so you can select a color overlay or any of these other options. So for example image on white where you can see the affected area and then a white uh, background for that area. But I prefer to have it in the color overlay mode. But as with many things in Lightroom and with photo editing in general, this is all about personal preference. So see what works best for you. I prefer to have it in the color overlay mode and just using a red color which is basically the default. Now on the right hand side you can see a list of all the masks you've created and the mask that you have selected. And below that list are all the tweaks that you can do to your mask. Now you can also change the size of these panels and you can drag this mask panel to anywhere else on the photo. So you can just put it right up there if you don't want it to be in the way of the editing panel in the masks tab. Now you can adjust almost all the same settings that you have in the regular editing panel, but actually one thing you don't have in the regular editing mode is the hue slider, which lets you change the hue of the selected area. And below the hue there is actually this color setting, which will let you add some color into the selected area. So if I wanted to add blue into the area that I selected, I can just go up here to the blue color in this color tab and Lightroom will add that selected color to the masked out area. Now the hue slider here in the masks panel is actually a lot more powerful than the hue slider in the HSL tab so you can really make anything any color you want to so you can see the sky is actually going pink when I tweak the hue slider but that's something you could never do with the HSL panel and this lets you get so creative with your edits. Depending on the type of a mask you have when you hover over the image you may see these handles appear so you can pull these handles to change the size and the shape of your mask and you can also rotate your mask from here and you can also grab the center of the mask and move the mask wherever you want it to be. Now going to this red circle here you can also actually change the feathering of the mask so the feathering will determine how soft the edge of the mask is. Now if I want to affect everything outside of this mask so let's say I want to keep this blue area here of the sky unaffected but I want to affect everything else I can click on the invert button up here and now we are affecting everything outside of this mask. And when you invert your mask, you can see this little icon appear up here in the masks list that will tell you that it's an inverted mask. Now you can also invert it by clicking on these three dots here and then selecting invert. Now if you have a lot of masks created, so let's just create a couple of different masks here, it doesn't matter what they are. So now that our masks list is getting quite cluttered with all of the masks, we could actually rename them. So I can double click on this and maybe go sky for the name of this mask. And then, I don't know, bottom left 
for this one and so on so that you can keep yourself organized with the masks tab if you create a lot of masks for one image. But the real power of masks lies in how you can actually create those different masks and how you can refine the area that you want to edit. So I'll just move this masks tab back to the right hand side panel here and then make it a little bit larger. So once you already have one or more masks created you can just click on this plus icon to create a new mask and that will open up a menu of all the different options you can use to create a mask. So let's start from the top of this list and work our way down to the bottom. So the select subject will use AI to scan for the main subject of your image. And if you have a clear subject in your image, Lightroom will usually do a very, very good job at recognizing your subject. So let's just click on that. And you can see it selected me very, very well. Lightroom can find different types of subjects, but it's usually the best at finding people in the photos because it can really recognize what people look like. Sometimes with a different type of an object, Lightroom might not be able to find the subject too well and the mask won't end up being too good, but at least you should try to create the mask with the select subject tool because there's no harm in doing it and you might just end up with a perfect mask with just one click. Now next up on the list we have select sky and it will also use AI, but instead of selecting the subject, it will select the sky in your image. And once again Lightroom usually does a very very good job with selecting the sky of your image. Now next up we have select background. So it will do the exact same AI scan as with the select subject but it will kind of invert the selection to select the background instead of selecting the subject. So you could actually do the exact same thing by selecting the subject and just inverting the selection. And now these two masks are basically the exact same and if you want to select your subject, you could kind of select the background and then invert that mask. There's no reason in why you would do that, but that's just how Lightroom works with creating the masks for the subject and the background. Next up, we have the select people, and this is very powerful. Now, when you click on select people, it will use AI to recognize all of the people in the frame. Now here we only have one person, but if we had more, it would show up as person two, person three, and so on. Now, when you select the person you want to create a mask for, Lightroom will open up a new menu showing you all the different parts of that person that you can create the mask for. This is an extremely big help for tweaking exact parts of different people in your image. So for example, if I would only want to tweak the skin of myself here in this image, I could just go ahead and select all the different skin parts that Lightroom found and then create the mask only based on those parts of the selection. Now you can also select if you want to create separate masks for each part of the subject you selected or create one big mask of all of the parts that you selected. And if you have more people in your photo, you can also add those to the same mask from here. Now I can't tell you how much easier this person detection tool has made editing photos for us photographers. This is just a mind-blowingly good tool for masking out people from your photos. Next up on the list we have the objects tool. So this will give you a brush that you can use to paint over the object that you want to select. And you can change the size of the brush by scrolling on your mouse wheel. And the area that you brush on can be quite rough. So let's just create a rough mask around the camera here. So something like that. And Lightroom will do its best job at finding the object that I painted on to create a mask for that object. Now you can also use a rectangular box to select the object. So if you click on create new mask and select objects, down here you can select the mode whether you want it to be the brush or the rectangular box. So let's select the box and draw a box around the camera like this and Lightroom will try to select that camera. Now this photo is a bit tricky for Lightroom because the camera and the hand are both very dark, but let's just select a different photo, for example with the boats here. So for example with this photo, if we just click on objects and select the rectangle tool and just draw a mask around this boat, for example, we can see how well Lightroom masks out just this boat. Next up on the list is the brush tool, which will just create a mask on all of the areas that you paint on. Now you can change the size of this brush by scrolling again on your mouse wheel and if you hold down Alt or Option, you can use a negative brush so you can erase with this brush and if you hold down Shift, you can change the feathering of the brush. For the brush, you have a few options here. So you've got the size obviously changes the size of the brush, the feathering will change the softness of the edge of the brush and then you have flow and density. So basically the flow setting will affect how much every brush stroke will add to the mask. So if we have it at 10 and we paint on 10 times, that will be basically the same as having it at 100 and painting once. Now the density is the maximum opacity of the brush that you use. So if we just pull this down to around 20 and the flow back up to 100, if we paint 
we can only create a 20% opaque mask. Now, actually, I'm going to delete this mask and show you what the auto selection does. So let's create a new brush and pull both the flow and the density to 100. So down here, we have an auto mask selection. And what this selection does is it makes Lightroom search for edges on the areas that you paint on so that you won't go out of bounds of the object that you're painting on. So for example, with the auto mask selected, if we paint on the mountains here, it's not going to go on the the sky at all but if we deselect the auto mask lightroom will just paint on anything that we paint according to the brush that we have selected so with the brush tool you can select even the most complex of objects if the automatic tools won't do a good enough job and also with the auto mask of the brush if that doesn't do a good enough job you can deselect that and go manually painting every pixel if you want to but obviously if you can do it more automatically it will save you a ton of time but sometimes the automatic functions just don't work quite the way you want them to so you have to do some manual tweaking with the brush so next up on our list is the linear gradient and basically how you use this is you just draw a line and one side of the line will get affected and one side won't get affected and once you've created your linear gradient you can change the position and the size of it and the rotation of it just with these handles in here. Now next up on the list is the radial gradient which is that circle mask that I showed you before. So basically this is just a circle shaped mask that you can tweak right here with the handles that you have in the image. Now holding down alt on windows or option on a mac and changing the size or holding down shift and changing the size will let you change the size and the shape of the mask in different ways. Now I think a radial gradient is the absolute best way in Lightroom to create a vignette. So let's should create a selection around our whole image like this and then let's invert the mask. Now if we zoom out from the image we can really dial in the size and the shape of the vignette that we want to have and we have all of these different tweaks that we can do for the vignetting. So using a mask instead of the vignetting tool to create a vignette for your image will give you a whole lot more control over the vignette because you can tweak all of these different settings for your vignette. Now next up on the list we have color range and this will let us select a range of colors that Lightroom will use to create the mask. Now in here we can click with the eyedropper or click and drag on the image to select the colors that we want to create the mask with. Clicking will only select the colors from a small area around the eyedropper but clicking and dragging will select all of the colors in that box. So by clicking you can select fewer colors and by clicking and dragging you can select more colors. So I'm just going to click on the C to select colors that are similar to the color of the C and we can further refine the selection with the refine slider here so pulling it up will select more colors and pulling it down will select fewer colors. Now the last tool that you can use for any image that you have is the luminance range and this will work exactly the same way as the color range but instead of picking colors it will pick brightness values. So I'm just going to click on the sky and Lightroom will select the brightness values that it finds from the point where I clicked at. Now we can further refine this selection with the luminance range selector here on the right hand side and we can even change the whole selection to be completely different. Now this middle bar of the slider will select the range of brightness values that get selected and we can make it larger or smaller with these handles on the side here. And these little arrows here will tweak the feathering or the smoothness of the selection. Now clicking on show luminance map will show a black and white version of the image to better show the brightness values in the image and the values that we are actually selecting. Now there is one more item on the list of ways you can create the mask but that's usually grayed out for almost every photo that you have and that selection is the depth range. So if your camera creates a depth map from the image it takes, Lightroom can use that depth map to create a mask based on how far or close to the camera the object is that you're masking out. But pretty much the only ways you can use a depth map is with specific iPhones with the portrait mode and with Lightroom's built-in camera with depth capture. But with many smartphones and with drones or with proper cameras, you're basically never going to be able to use the depth range feature. So that is all the different ways you can create a mask, but the best thing is you can actually combine all of these different ways to create a larger mask so let's just delete all of the masks here and click on the sky button to select the sky of this image now if I also want to do the same exact tweaks to the bottom part of the image I can add to this selection with a linear gradient for example and just draw a mask with the linear gradient tool to the bottom of the image. And let's say I only want to affect the right hand side of the image. I can actually create a subtract mask to erase from this current selection. So let's create a linear gradient 
and take out the left side of the image. So now we're only affecting the sky and the bottom part of the image on the right hand side of this image. So you can mix and match and you can add and subtract with any of the different masking tools in Lightroom. And remember that you can also invert any of the masks that you create. So you really have a ton of control over selecting the area that you want to edit. And also keep in mind that you can create as many masks as you want to. So you can really tweak specific parts of your image just as much as you ever want to. And I would actually almost always have a radial gradient to create a vignette for my image. So in here I've darkened the bottom part of the sea and just kind of the edges of the image to emphasize the center part of this image. But that's all I have for the massive world of masking in Lightroom Classic. If there's any questions that you have, just drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. There is so much that you can do with masks in Lightroom, so you should really learn them. They're actually not that hard to learn once you get the hang of it. Now there are only a couple more tools to go over and in the next part we'll go over the healing tools of Lightroom. So I'll see you in the next one.